Well, with more reaction to the win, I am joined now by former San Diego State coach Michael Brunker. Michael, boy, let's just let you have it here. What a moment for San Diego State. What was it like watching it? Hey, let me tell you something. Is everybody excited now? That's all I can ask. I <laughs> yes. mean, right, you know, hey, I, I worked for Dick Vitale for six years, and, and, and we all know who he is on ESPN. And, and I think right now we can all understand when he says, that was awesome, baby, with a capital A. That's right. And so you put an exclamation point on that performance. This San Diego State team is obviously the greatest team that San Diego State has ever fielded. And, and now to be in the final game that they will win, by the way. They're going to win the national championship. And I've been saying this all along because I truly believe great teams win close games. Hey, this was a great game. Hats off to Florida Atlantic. They had great performances, uh, and, and, and we dug in the whole game, but especially that first half scoring 40. But I, I talked this morning about the importance in a game to have what I call the fantastic five. And, and when you look at this, when you look at who are the secretaries of defense, I have two right now. Johnson and Mensah did a great job on the seven-foot center, holding him to five points. Wow. That was a big, big issue right there. Secondly, the chairman of the boards, Ladee, Mensah, and Bradley combined for 18 rebounds. That was a key point in the game right now. We talk about you need to have an executor, and Matt Bradley came alive with 21 points right on time in a game when we really needed it. And then, then you need a minister of motivation, and a rook comes off the bench, number 33. I love him to death. He had nine points, two rebounds, and one block. Those were huge contributions. And then the leader of the pack has got to go to Lamont Butler. And I heard earlier uh, the talk about what happens when it's late in the game, it's, the time is running out. Do you call a timeout or do you just let it flow? Mm. And that's, uh, you know, Brian Dutcher and his squad. They had confidence because they know every player – Playing for San Diego State is a self-leader. They understand what they have to do, how to really take care of their business and do exactly what they had to do. So I'm just excited, and and especially, too, you know, we've heard Ted Leitner is calling his first Final Four. Now he's in a championship game. I mean, Ted Leitner is going to call a championship game. But I'm thinking about the interview that Bree just did before this right now with the, uh, the, the alum who just talked with so much passion how he had tears in his eyes, and he is not alone because there's so many Aztecs for life that watch this game across, around the globe and, and saw their team, their university, going to the national championship game on Monday. Well, and Michael, you said there you think they can win either way. I guess who do you think they stack up better against, Miami or UConn? Who would you like to see the Aztecs play? It doesn't matter. They have to worry about San Diego State. Because I think we've proven that we could beat the number one seed in the country, Alabama. And, and we came back against a tough Creighton team. And now this game, Florida Atlantic is a very good team. The, the way they were shooting a three-point shot and taking the ball to the hoop and running the court, we dealt with that all the way and came back and won in, in heroic style. So I think right now, you know, whoever we are going to play is going to have to worry more about San Diego State Aztecs than they are who we have to worry about playing right now. Well, and all attention is going to turn to Monday very shortly, but let's take a quick trip down memory lane back when you were at San Diego State in the 80s. Did you guys ever think that something like this was possible, that San Diego State would be playing for a national title? Absolutely. I think everybody that ever suits up at any university across the country, they all want to get to the NCAA tournament, whatever it takes, with the goal and hopes of winning it. The ironic thing is, uh, prior to me coming to San Diego State in 1980, where I coached here from 80 to 87, and I was a, a two years assistant coach with the Detroit Pistons, but I spent four years at the University of Detroit, where we went to the NCAA tournament in 1977. The national champion that year was Marquette, coached by Al McGuire. Mm. And the thing that's really pretty unique about that team there is that we beat Marquette during the regular season. They had six losses going into the NCAA tournament. Al McGuire often talks about he didn't even know if he would get there, let alone win the whole thing. But I did some research uh, before this game today, and that was the only national championship that Marquette has ever won. So I think everybody aspires to be there, even though year in and year out, we hear about teams that are winning, they're, they're the you know number one seeds, they should win it for whatever reason. But I'm telling you what, what we're seeing this year is that anybody can win it. And so 
teams, even the teams that, you know, and I know there was a drought there since the time we left there until Steve Fisher got here. In his first couple of years, it was tough on them as well. But you got to believe. And when we talk about I believe that we can win, <laughs> you've got to believe. If you don't believe, who's going to believe in you? Just like Butler, when he came down to court, he had the confidence. He had the belief that he could hold on to that ball, make the right moves, get to his spot, and hit nothing but nets wow. before the buzzer blew. That was a beautiful thing. And what we've seen, we're going to watch that replay time and time again. It's going to be on ESPN Sports Center top highlight. But That's he right. did it. And, and, and I'll tell you what, we've heard also oftentimes, too, that th this team will never forget this run. This okay. may be for some of them. They may never play professionally. They may never, ne never go to the next level. But I'm telling you what, San Diego's a great town. And when I, uh, you know, I could have stayed in coaching in, after leaving San Diego State in 1987. But because of the great people here in San Diego, that's why my family is still here. And I don't regret it at all. And to be a witness to what we just saw today and what we've seen with this joyful journey yeah. for San Diego State through this NCAA tournament, led by Brian Dutcher and his amazing staff and his great team. I mean, what a joy to be able to be a part of this. And I know every Aztec alum, every ex-Aztec basketball player, I got a call from Michael Cage, who was one of those players during our years from 80 to 87. And he's now doing the broadcasting for Oklahoma City Thunder. But he played in the NBA for 15 years. And he called, he's thrilled. Preon Dorsey, who was the point guard on that NCAA tournament team that we had in 1985, it was the last NCAA tournament team we had before Steve Fisher's run and, and Brian Dutcher right now. He was there. And, and I mean, it, it, everybody's just hmm. absolutely excited, thrilled, and appreciative of this opportunity to be a witness of what we're seeing right now. Well, I think that just shows it took decades of people buying into the San Diego State Aztec program to get to the point that we're at today. So exciting. Michael, I could talk to you for another hour. You speak with such passion. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. Appreciate you, and thank you for all your great coverage, and, and, and go Aztecs. Of course, go Aztecs.